Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat. All praise is to God alone, the creator and the sustainer of all of the universes. We give our allegiance to God. We give our prayers to God and God willing, we surrender ourselves to God because in God is truth and in God is the only truth. Truth is from him and through him and through that truth, it comes to us. We are creations of Allah and we were created through elements, which means that our physical form was created through elements. And these elements were not Allah, they were his creation. And he took his creation, he took earth and the other elements and made man. And within man, he put in a portion of himself. He blew a breath into man. And that breath is the soul of man. And each of us has that soul, which means that we are a being in two parts. We are an elemental being and we are a non-elemental being. And we need to understand that about ourselves. The elemental portion of ourselves is attracted to the other elements in creation. And there is sort of almost a magnetism between our elemental parts and the elements in the world. And this is the root of desire, this attraction between ourselves and the world. And this attraction puts us into a sort of a stupor. It makes us believe things that we believe because we love this stupor. We love this torpor. We love this attraction. We love what it is that we get from this elemental connection. So we love the glitter of the world. We love the lights in the world. We love the elements in the world. We love our possessions in the world. We love what we can do in the world. And we form opinions about the world. And these opinions are formed through our mind, through our desires, and through our elemental portions. But there is something higher than our opinions. There is something higher than what we get through our desires. There is something higher than what the mind tells us. And this is why we look for teachers. This is why we look for sheikhs. We need to have our opinions refined. We need to have our opinions disappear and truth enter in their place. We need to get to the point where we understand that we do not know. And the only thing we do know is going to come from our creator through his grace and from the teacher who is the vice regent of the creator, who takes us and points us in the appropriate direction with the appropriate point of view. My teacher used to tell me constantly and everyone else that first we need to understand the difference between right and wrong. And there is a difference between right and wrong. We are not free agents who can do 
whatever we want. Now, we have been given will to do whatever we want, but that doesn't mean that should that is what we should be doing. We have to have certain restrictions on our being, and it's by adhering to those restrictions, by being bound to those restrictions, by being bound in the way that we act, that we find freedom, unlimited access to our emotions, to our thoughts, and unlimited acts as to them brings us into chaos and brings us into a place that is not graceful, that is not from God. What we need to do is be able to separate what is God and what isn't God. Now, understand that the elements are separate from reality. The elements are part of illusion. And if we buy this illusion as reality, then we are being taken in an inappropriate path. So we need to understand the difference between right and wrong. We need to understand what it is that we should be doing, what it is that we should allow ourselves to be doing, and what's the limit of what we should allow ourselves to be doing in this world. The teachers, the Qutubs, the sheikhs, the prophets came with instructions. They didn't say, do what you want. They said, do this and do that. Confine yourself to a way of action. Confine yourself to a certain norm as to your involvement in things. Be honest, have integrity, do things in a certain way, and understand the difference between right and wrong. There is in the Quran, in the Bible, in the law system, there is punishment for inappropriate acts. Why is there punishment for inappropriate acts? Because if these acts are committed constantly, then the world turns into chaos, there is no order, and there is no progression. If man slips from holiness, if man slips from purity, if man slips from truthfulness, there are consequences for him in these actions. The consequences essentially have to do that he separates himself from God the further he slips from truth and from reality. And this is the punishment that comes to man. He's pushed away from God. He's not allowed into God's presence. He can't be brought into God's presence. And what keeps him from God's presence? His own actions, his own acts, the things that he does, the things that he allows himself to do, his total disregard for the rules and the instructions that the prophets have come with. When we first came to our teacher, it was in the early 70s. And in the early 70s, there was a wildness going on in America. Uh, the, the, the end of the time of what they called the hippies was still here. People came with beards. People came uh, dressed in rags. People came as if they had abandoned the world. And what he did immediately was have people shave, get haircuts, get jobs, and become productive within society. He had them clean themselves up. And in that cleaning, he gave them a methodology 
for beginning to function in this life in an appropriate way. And he explained things to us. And these explanations had to do with the understanding of a term called insan kamo, which means perfected man. And the explanation that perfected man is different than ordinary man. And what God placed us here to become was perfected man. Not every face is a human face. Many faces, even though they look human, are actually animals because they haven't climbed the ladder of consciousness into human consciousness. They stay at animal consciousness. And often they're very happy at animal consciousness. They believe that it's sufficient for them. There are many thresholds to cross in this world on the path to reality. And I wrote a short poem about that once. On the road to reality, there are many thresholds to cross. Each of them beckons you to call it home. If you stay, you will change from a pilgrim to a defender of thresholds. Now, what has happened is people find a belief system that they're comfortable with, uh, their mind aligns itself with, and they think they found the truth. So they stop and they begin to defend that point of view. This is what happens in religions. Each of the religions has a point of view. People get to the religion and they say, oh my God, I found it. And the religion tells them this is the only way and they believe it. And so there they are. They've got it. They have become perfected. We can't become perfected until we've reached the level of the qualities of Allah. And this is a never-ending task. The thresholds never end. Our learning never ends. Our state of being a student never ends. And as soon as we begin to think that we have concluded our studies, we have ended our progress, we have ended our journey, we have ended the path that we walk on. So we have to understand that this is an endless path. This is a path that continues and continues and continues until there's no more to this path because reality has been reached. And it's described almost in a quantum understanding of things. God is within all of us. And he's within all of us, within an atom. This atom is minuscule, and it's not like the atom that the scientists know. It's something else. And if your wisdom can see this and can tune in on this, it will see that within this atom, there are 99 spheres that rotate around each other. And these 99 spheres never touch, but they are the, they are the Asmal Husna. They are the names of God, which all together form Allah. In their individual nature, they are different aspects of that one Allah, but they are Allah. And if you go into any one of these spheres and splice it, you'll find that there are 99 spheres within that sphere. And if you splice any one of those spheres, there are 99 spheres within that sphere in an endless progression of the fact that Allah is deeply embedded within everything that we know. And that atom 
that is God is within each of us and within each of our hearts. And all of those qualities that are his truths reside within us. And our purpose in this world is to discover those truths. Now, we spend an enormous amount of time with discussing, trying to manipulate, trying to understand the world that surrounds us, the dunya which surrounds us. For those of you who don't know what dunya means, it's used to describe the world, but the actual meaning is the dung heap, because it is not the grace, it is not the effulgence, it is the other. And what we need to do is find the effulgence, find the grace, find the truth, find the qualities. So as we study these things, we begin to understand that God's grace is constantly around us. But at the same time that God's grace surrounds us, there is also constantly the anti-God sentiment that surrounds us. Some call it Satan. Satan surrounds us and brings in the influence of the qualities that are not God. Satan brings into mad the qualities of arrogance, the qualities of jealousy, the, quali the qualities of hastiness. And when these qualities are brought into being, it draws us away from the qualities of unity. If you look at the qualities that are other than God, most of them have to do with individualism. When you talk about ego, what are you talking about? The self. When you talk about arrogance, what are you talking about? You're talking about your own power. When, you, when you're talking about jealousy, what are you talking about? You're talking about what you want and what you don't have and what you would like to deny someone else. You are talking about the fact that you've separated yourself from unity, that you are now separate from unity. And the point is to return to unity. So we have to give up within us all of the tendencies that have to do with self-business, that have to do with self-motive, that have to do with aggrandizement of the self. We have to learn to give up our attachment to the self and to the things that make us more. This is a very, very difficult thing for people to do because they were raised being taught about becoming successful within this world, gathering the fruits of this world, picking up what they need for themselves, getting the best job they can get, getting the most titles they can get, getting what it is that makes them more, and separating themselves from everybody else through more wealth, through more knowledge, through more titles, through more degrees, all kinds of separations. Separation is the opposite of unity. And as long as we see ourselves separate, we are moving away from the true understanding of Allah, moving away from the true understanding of God. And as we move away from that, we begin to develop ideas that support that belief system. Atheists have ideas that support their atheistic system. Ones in religion who want to separate their religion from others begin 
to have all kinds of reasons why their religion is right and everybody else's religion is wrong, why their rituals are appropriate and everybody else's rituals are inappropriate. We need to find the unity in all of it. And we need to know how to find the unity in all of it. And the method that the Sufis choose to find the unity in all of it is to find one who is a manifestation of that unity and to look at that manifestation of unity, that being who's been sent on earth to spread unity, to encourage unity, to explain unity, to look at that manifestation and to begin to analyze and understand what is it within that manifestation that's different from me? What is it within that manifestation that draws me to be near him, that draws me to be around him, that makes me feel comfortable while I'm with him, that gives me a sense of peace that I don't have when I'm not near him? What is it? How come that exists and it exists around him? And the answer is that the one who has peace gives off a resonance of peace. And if you come close to that resonance and you can give up all of your own thoughts and ideas for a moment, you can find that peace. You can absorb that peace. You can be protected by that peace. You can be surrounded by that peace. You can imbibe that peace. You can know that peace. You can know that in contentment. You can know that serenity. I used to drive 70 miles back and forth a minimum of three times a week in order to find that. And finally, Bawa said, why don't you move here? And I did. And then it made things a little easier. I just had to drive 70 miles to work. <laughs> so the driving didn't end. But the center of my attention uh, came closer to the truth. We need to understand how to surrender. And what that means is we need to understand how to give up certain portions of ourselves. Everything that is not inclusive needs to be given up. Everything that is a separation needs to be given up. Everything that is inappropriate needs to be given up. There's a word in Arabic, also in Turkish, adeb. And adeb means etiquette. Adeb means an appropriate way to act. And man has to learn the appropriate way to act. That's the beginning of following the path. That's the beginning of surrender. Being appropriate in your nature, being polite, having all of these qualities in your nature is the first step towards surrender and towards union and understanding what union is. Now, in the, the steps towards union, you need to understand the following. Allah is not form. Allah doesn't have the things of this world. Allah doesn't need the things of this world. Allah doesn't have children. Allah doesn't have a, a wife or a husband. Allah doesn't have attachments. He doesn't have gold. He doesn't have silver. He doesn't need any of these things. But Allah is a fulgent grace. And Allah has mercy. And Allah has compassion. And Allah has justice. And Allah is willing to share mercy and compassion with humanity. 
which means that each of us can have mercy and compassion. Each of us can have God's justice. Each of us can have God's peace. Now imagine that the Lord of all creation, the one who created each of us, who sustains the 18,000 universes, who keeps us all going, is so generous towards us that he allows us to bear his qualities. He allows us to understand what it's like within his realm. He allows us to take on that which is he. So he shares himself with us. And what is a greater sharing than to give of yourself? And Allah gives that to each and every man, if each and every man is capable of taking it. And the intermediary step for that work is the teacher, the sheikh. The sheikh gives in the way Allah gives. The sheikh doesn't hold back. The sheikh is here for you. The sheikh is here to help you. The sheikh is here to give to you. And if you allow yourself to lose your separations, to lose your arrogance, to lose your differences, then the sheikh's resonance can enter into you. And when that resonance enters into you, then the resonance of mercy enters into you. The resonance of love enters into you. The resonance of compassion enters into you. The resonance of peace enters into you. The resonance of generosity enters into you. The resonance of contentment enters into you. The resonance of serenity enters into you. Now, when you are serene, when you are in a state of love, when you are in a state of contentment, it's very difficult to be jealous because there's nothing to be jealous about. You have found peace. It's very difficult to have <clears throat> arrogance because there's no need for arrogance. Your love is so overwhelming. It touches everything around you and it wants everything around you to flourish. Arrogance separates, love unifies. Arrogance pushes away, love brings together. And that's what the qualities of God do. They bring together, but they bring together in an appropriate way. Understand that the earth has arrogance and a power, that fire has arrogance and a power, that water has arrogance and a power, that air has arrogance and a power. And if you don't understand that, look at a tornado, look at a hurricane, Look at an earthquake. Look at the power that these elements have and look at the destruction that they are capable of causing. All of these elements also exist within us. And they're capable of discussing, the, they're capable of doing the same things in us that they do externally that we see. We can have hurricanes within our being. We can have earthquakes within our being. We can have tornadoes within our being, and these things erupt within us. Or <clears throat> we can choose to suppress them. We can choose not to allow ourselves free reign, but to bind ourselves to certain behavior, to bind ourselves towards certain interaction with others, to understand that God has set forth restrictions on man that man should follow. But he's also given man a sense of free will, so he doesn't have to follow these restrictions and has the ability to go outside of them. But that doesn't mean that it's correct. Allah has his qualities, and he has the things that he doesn't have. And if we choose to have the things that Allah doesn't have, 
then we separate ourselves from God. If we choose to have arrogance, we separate ourselves from God. If we choose to have jealousy, we separate ourselves from God. If we see things as being limited, if we see things as restrictive, we separate ourselves from God. There is an abundance in our creator that is passed on to us. And this abundance is available to us. Now, this abundance may not be available to us in the way that we want the abundance to be available to us. We may want abundance in silver and abundance in gold, abundance in wealth and abundance in homes, but this is not things that God has. This is not true abundance. And because we misunderstand abundance, we set up a difficulty between ourselves and God. How come I don't have this? How come I don't have that? Well, these are not the things that God's interested in. These are not the things that God gives you because God knows that they're not going to change you. They're not going to change you to be more God-like. And what God is interested in is for you to become God-like and for you to become, for us to become God-like. What is it that we need? We don't need the things that are manifest. We don't need the things that are form. We need the things that are formless. And if we have them, we don't need anything else. God is formless and he doesn't need anything. Repeat that to yourselves. God is formless and he doesn't need anything. Can we get to the point where we don't need anything because we have God? This is when we begin to bridge the animal and true human perspectives of existence. This is when we begin to bridge the area that animals live in and the area that humans live in. Now, many, many humans live as animals. Many, many humans have the qualities of animals. We need to give up those qualities and get the qualities of God. And then a change comes over our lives. When I was with my sheikh, <clears throat> people would give him things. And whatever came into his right hand went out of his left hand. And whatever came into his left hand went out of his right hand. He didn't hold on to anything. Why? Because he didn't need anything. There was no satisfaction from things for him. The only satisfaction was when he saw that you changed and you became closer to being like him. This was satisfaction for him. And we need to understand this. We need to understand where our true satisfaction lies and where our false satisfaction lies. If we believe in illusion, and we think that illusion can fulfill our needs, we will find very quickly that it can't. People spend their whole life accumulating things, yet they still have an emptiness inside of them. And they ask themselves, why this emptiness when I seem to have accumulated all that I need? And the answer that comes to the ones who don't believe is, you haven't accumulated enough. You just need a little more. And they get back on the treadmill <clears throat> trying to accumulate the riches of the world. And then they die with the riches of the world. And the riches of the world become their portion. And peace does not become their portion. Justice does not become their portion. Love does not become their portion. <laughs> if we want to truly understand the eternal nature of existence, because the eternal nature of existence 
lives directly adjacent to the temporary nature of existence. If we want to understand that eternal nature, then we have to understand what is eternal. Love doesn't dissipate the way the earth dissipates. Justice doesn't dissipate the way the earth dissipates. Compassion, mercy don't dissipate. They don't disappear. They don't die. And if you can become mercy and justice and compassion and love, you become eternal. And this is the path for us, the, the path of love, the path of becoming love, the path of understanding love, and the path of giving love. It's not enough to know the names of these qualities. They also have to be the way we act. They have to come into our being and be expressed by us towards everyone else. It starts with the family, and then it spreads out to the rest of humanity. We have to give to everyone and give them what? Mercy. The prophet said a smile is charity. And we need to understand that, that human interaction, human help is charity, and that there's always this available to us, even though all of these other things are going wrong. The world is an unstable place. The elements are unstable, and they are constantly in conflict, but God's qualities are stable, and they're always available to us, and they are our shelter. They are our sanctuary, and this is the sanctuary that we have to go to. We have to discover our sanctuary in God. We have to discover our sanctuary in his qualities, and we have to surrender to those qualities. And when we can give up everything else and reside with those qualities, then truth will come to us, and we won't need anything else. We'll be satisfied. We'll be sufficient. We will know what it is we need to know, and we will be at one with all of creation. And this happens as we give up everything that is of illusion and take on that which is real. May it come to pass that we understand the difference and that we devote ourselves to reality and to surrender to reality so that we can all become that which our Lord meant us to become, true human beings, the ones who walk with his qualities. Amin, amin, ya rabbi lalamin, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah.